I have a very special guest joining us on the show today, Frank Eppel of DHL Group. He's the global CEO, someone who's got a pulse on the global trade, and he's my guest on the show today. Frank, thanks very much for jo joining us on the show. Tell us about uh, your visit about, uh, into Mumbai in India. Is this your first visit? What are the main objective of your visit this time around? No, I have been here several times, and it's always a pleasure to come back. Uh, there is no special purpose except to say thank you to our operations here, to our colleagues. We have a great operation. We do more than a billion euro revenues in the meantime. More than 25,000 colleagues are working for us here. Our business has grown nicely in the past years. Uh, we have high quality in all our products we offer. We have a very broad range. So it's more or less a, a normal visit for me, which I have done in the past, to say thank you very much and appreciate the hard work that people are doing here for us. We also understand that uh, you've just inaugurated your one of your you know, green centers here in Mumbai. And at organization levels, you, you've set yourself some really ambitious targets and conscious ones which you're working towards to move towards being a green company, really reducing your carbon footprint. And this is a topic which is a hot topic right now globally in India too. Several companies are moving in that direction. Talk to us about the initiatives there. Yeah, so I'm now more than nine years in the office as the CEO. And um, you know, one of the first things in 2008, we decided that we gave ourselves a goal to increase our efficiency with regard to carbon by 30% based on our 2007 emissions. Mm -hmm. We are emitting a lot of carbon uh, dioxide uh, and therefore we felt we have to make a difference and a contribution. We have achieved our goal already last year and that's the reason why we decided very recently announced that, that we want to have we have a new mission, what we call Mission 2050 Zero Emissions, mm -hmm. and we really want to reduce our carbon footprint to zero. So that's in a very ambitious goal. I believe that it's necessary because we don't need global warming, and that's a reality. Therefore, everybody has to contribute to that. I hope that customers will appreciate that, that new recruits will work, l enjoy working for our company, mm -hmm. that competitors, not too fast, follow us so that we have a competitive advantage, but that they copy us because then we create m demand as well for suppliers to create new technology solutions. So, you know, I'm a very excited about that because I see, as a trained scientist, I see that as a responsibility of everybody to do make a difference. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, uh, that was pretty impressive about when I was reading about you, how you were a scientist for a long time then became a consultant at McKinsey and now heading this organization. You're also heading the organization at a time when global trade is in focus. And at the nature of the company, you, uh, organi the industry you're in, you have a very good handle on the trends in the global trade. On the one hand, agencies like IMF are saying that the outlook for global trade and global economy is good. On the other hand, some people are scared and nervous about the protectionism wave which is gripping the world right now. What are your thoughts on do both these issues? So first of all, you know, our own research we are doing on a regular basis, which we call DHL Connect Index, Index shows definitely that 2016 was the most connected year ever in history of life. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore we are on the right path. I read as well and hear that some politicians think that it's good f to protect their own market to their benefit. Uh, you know, but there are zero facts that support that strategy. You know, there are overwhelming facts which support the strategy to have create an open market, a competitive market, uh, because that has been very beneficial. The most connected countries in the world, you know, be it Netherlands, Singapore, Germany, the UK, mm -hmm. have a very high development standard, human development standard as well, and that's a very clear proof that open your market, being willing to compete with others, is the best you can do for your country. So. I hear that. I hope that mm -hmm. the politicians will realize the facts and figures as well, which is very clearly demonstrating that openness is good for everybody. What happened so far is new signature under trade agreements have been stopped, mm -hmm. but not a single one which is in place has been stopped. Therefore, I think this year still will continue to see good growth in trade, good growth in, in GDP. I think 2017 will be even better than we expected at the beginning of the year on a global scale. So therefore, you know, I'm optimistic and say sometimes let's wait and see, focus on what we have to do to mm -hmm. support global trade. Right. You know, your clients, uh, some of the clients which are spread across the world, uh, are actually part of the various key indices across the world, uh, aid very importantly in the profitability of the corporates in that country. Let's start by understanding what's happening in America, the earnings season around the corner, of course. The large corporations, 
your clients in America, what are they telling you about the direction it's moving in? Do you really think the underlying uh, strength uh, coming back to the American economy? So, you know, at the moment we have a fascinating situation anyway because um, China is doing better than expected, India is doing better than expected, Europe is doing better than expected, and the U.S. is doing better than expected too. So we have not seen anywhere in the world signs of slowdown of economic growth, and the U.S. is not different either. And since not real reforms have taken place, it's very difficult to judge what mm -hmm. will happen because first, tax reforms, which might be beneficial to the U.S. if there comes duty, it's unknown yet. So therefore, it's, I think it's too early to really predict. As I said, the, the, the short term, I think we have a better outlook currently than we had months ago. Uh, Midterm, protectionism is definitely not good. Tax reforms are quite often healthy for countries mm -hmm. because if it makes it simpler and more straightforward, it usually um, you know, supports economic growth. And economic growth will be good for the U.S., but also for the rest of the world. So when you're making plans internally for the group, for the organization, two year, three year, five year, far, far out, what kind of estimates are you building in uh, for your own growth? Because to a large extent, it's a reflection of how global trade will pan out and how the economy, the global economy will pan out. Uh, so that's, that's an excellent question. So we have already said in 2014 that we will not see an economic growth of trade in similar as the GDP growth. And we expected that between three and three and a half percent. Mm -hmm. So and that has materialized so far. We have not seen recessions, but we have not seen the strong growth we have seen before. Why? Because a major leap, uh, a leap from, from globalization has taken place already. Mm -hmm. So the world needs now a next generation of productivity gains, which will come with digitalization, but it's still five years out until that really materializes in stronger economic growth. So what we see is a normal growth rate of three to three and a half percent. So to adapt with all these things is that you need a long-term plan you can cope with. And then you, if you have a long-term plan, you can deal with that. Uh, and you know manage challenges on the short end and you know we have also despite the brexit was already vote you voted for uh, we acquired a company in the uk because we believe e-commerce will continue to grow and we need a parcel operator in the uk so we are not taking our decisions just on the flavor of the month we are taking our decisions on the long-term plan and the basic belief that fundamental trends mm -hmm. like globalization, e-commerce, digitalization will change, and we have to cope with them, and not what has just been elected in the last quarter or the last year. So mm -hmm. that is our plan, and I think that's the only advice you know I can right. give to others that make your decisions on your own plans and the fundamental trends the world mm -hmm. has, and not on a short-term outlook. Right. When quick word on on, the, on Britain because <coughs> the snap poll have been announced by Theresa May for June now. Uh, it was a little bit of a surprise. Your about 12% of your overall revenues uh, come from that region, Britain in particular. What are your thoughts the way Britain is moving towards Brexit? Uh, your observations? Yeah. So um, you know, first of all, most of our business domestic uh, of that. Uh, that means you know the okay. impact is you know, more depending on the economic growth of the UK. It very much depends on the outcome of a negotiation on one and what kind of reforms uh, the probably then re-elected prime minister will mm -hmm. take. So if she takes reforms for the labor market or for the tax regime which supports economic growth, it will be even beneficial for us. If, it, uh, if a free trade agreement will be completely dismantled between the UK and the EU, it will be not good for anybody. And mm -hmm. why it's not good for us either? Because sure. you know the growth of the British on the European companies will go down. So it's so far unpredictable what really happens. I think what is good is if there is a, a government clear beyond the Brexit, that is a different situation sure. than the Brexit is then mingled with a re-election of the government. So. I think it's probably good for the UK that now the re-election takes place, whoever has then the authority and whoever has then the government, because then even far beyond the Brexit, the current government is in place, and that's probably better than having the next election in the mm -hmm. UK mingled with a Brexit vote or you know the Brexit decision, the vote has already taken place. What about uh, the way uh, French elections are progressing or the, we are moving towards that? Uh, whatever, the, depending on the outcome, how significant would it be for the uh, region's economy? 
So it's very unclear what will happen. We will see. Therefore, it's difficult to comment on that. You know, everybody is looking forward to get the result now, so that at least uh, uh, there's more certainty. Uh, again, I think, you know, we have to explain citizens that globalization is good, that open markets mm -hmm. are good, that foreigners who are joining your country is something positive and not something negative. And my job and that of other leaders is to explain that again, again, and again. And we have to hope that not populism wins all over the place because the populists don't have a single answer to the challenges the sure. world is facing. So we have to be very clear that we have to explain. I do that. I do video clips internally where I explain why globalization is positive, why digitalization is positive, mm -hmm. because I see that as a part of my job to explain to our colleagues around the world, also in countries which might be more in favor of something against that at the moment, because they have to understand that they have benefited. Nobody from a normal income level could afford a smartphone if that would be not manufactured in Asia, because sure. it would be so expensive that it would be only available for the rich. Emerging markets uh, is also a big area for you. You derive a lot of business from emerging markets. What state are the emerging markets in right now? Uh, do you think they will lead the growth going forward? Are they in high growth trajectory? I think you know they will lead the growth, but they are not f as fast growing as they did because um, you know the globalization, the, f the biggest phase of globalization is now over. It's now really more driven by local consumption as mm -hmm. well. And local consumption can't grow with the same pace as arbitrage, which we had seen before. So therefore, we expect as well that Asian countries will grow faster, but not with a double-digit pace, but in a mid-range, single-digit range. Uh, and if you grow with 7.5% as India did, that's already high, I think, on that level. Yeah. So we have to be realistic what is doable. But of course, countries in Asia will continue to grow faster than the US or Europe. What's the state of China? The recent uh, first quarter number was slightly better reading than what economists were expecting. But if we keep the uh, you know, actual reading apart, what's the real state uh, it in? They're, they're changing the shape of the economy to a domestic one versus export oriented. Uh, what are your observations? of? Yeah, I think what, what we, we observe in, in China is uh, a normalization of what had been expected. China is now such a big part of the global economy and one single part can't grow that fast if it's so important for the world. This, this is just impossible. Therefore, it's just a complete normalization okay. and people are sometimes too negative about that. This is actually, you know, what I say, 7% or 10% from 100 is 10 and 7% from thousands is 70. <laughs> So, and, and people forget that sometimes. So the, the percentage point has to come down if a denominator gets larger. By definition, it's impossible sure. to continue to grow. So what happens is it goes from a big Imon export country, which will continue China be, to a more domestic driven, and the domestic GDP can't grow with 10, 15% every year, and that's the reason why we see a normalization. But China is still in good shape, and will continue to grow very systematically and sustainably. See, we Indians, uh, you know, a lot of parallels are drawn between India and China. We look up to them in many, uh, you know, areas. Uh, but we have our own very domestic run uh, nature of our economy. You operate uh, in very different areas of Indian economy and you observe at, at from a vantage point. Uh, what is your reading of last, how the way last two, three years have panned out for India? You know, I think um, India has really started to go on the right journey. You know, the largest democracy of the world is India and there comes with challenges. You have regular elections, you have more regulations with regard to infrastructure approvals and, and the decision making takes longer. So mm -hmm. that is a disadvantage. But what I see now is that the reforms the current government is taking is really helping to establish a stronger competitiveness. The GST will help India to grow faster because customers and companies will make their decisions in our case, for instance, more on logistics costs instead of tax arbitrage, which is right, because if you have a cost-optimized, service-optimized logistics, mm -hmm. you will take costs out, you will improve the service quality, and that's all beneficial and will generate additional growth. 
because the money which is saved can be reinvested in further growth or make the product cheaper so they become more affordable for the average person. So I think the reforms are heading up in the right direction. Therefore, I'm very optimistic that, that India will even accelerate the growth, even if it's short term sometimes tough, but over time it will accelerate the growth. And therefore, I'm very optimistic. And I'm particularly optimistic you know, for us as well, because we have such a grand franchise here. You know, our business is running so well and we have grown so nicely with strong quality that we will benefit as a company as such. And therefore, I'm excited about the times in India at the moment. So, uh, the way things are moving, the way your observations, you conducted some deep research as well. What do you think is the optimum potential for India on growth front? Not immediate, near term, a three, four, <coughs> five year period. So I'm, I'm not an economist and I refrain to make these guesses all the time. But it can you know, accelerate from current growth? So India ha is, is the home of 25% of all people below 25 years old. So India you know, if, the, if India has not a bright future, the world will have a very dark future because we need somehow the next generation to help the world to get enough hands to do all the work which is necessary to do. And if these people are not coming from India, where they should come from? China is aging pretty rapidly, Europe is aging pretty rapidly, US is okay, Jap Japan is aging as rapidly as the other two parts. So we need the young generation. If you do the right reforms, you can bring more manufacturing to India without a doubt. That will help. And therefore, I'm very optimistic. If you continue to do the right reforms, India can become a powerhouse for the world without a doubt. Actually, the, the economic model uh, you know, of various countries uh, ha also depends a whole lot about the immigration policy. Uh, you know, some countries are now gradually re reviewing the immigration policy to get in more immigrants from various world parts of the world, Japan for some. But I would like to understand from you, uh, we are now moving towards a unified tax regime which is GST and it is a very complicated process and we are finding some difficulties but we are moving forward. Globally, uh, this is an accepted model in several countries. Uh, how does it improve uh, efficiency, profitability of the companies and uh, even operations? Uh, what are any, any observations which you can share? That this model has worked abroad. How will it work for us? Yeah, I think, for instance, you know, if you if you would create instead of having whatever twenty distribution centers in India, you consolidate it in free. You can bring down your inventory. You can uh, improve your processes, how you manage, and that would be beneficial from service quality and cost. And that's just a simple example. At the moment, mm -hmm. companies are operating several distribution centers, otherwise they have disadvantages, and that is not right. Right is that you think, whom do you serve in this country, and what is the best way to do it in the most efficient way? And that's a benefit you have seen in other countries uh, as well, that you really avoid this arbitrage on non-business oriented KPIs, uh, you should optimize it to your business requirements and not to other purposes. And I think that will happen when the GST. There are still some challenges because, you know, as long as trucks are still controlled at the border between provinces, mm -hmm. you still have even inefficiency. Because if you have one GST system, you don't need control at the borders because, you know, you need one documentary and then the truck can go from Mumbai to Delhi straight away. That will take time out, inefficiencies out, cost out. That is still work in progress where I think India can do more because that will take cost out and this money is then available for higher consumption, more infrastructure investments or more growth through investments of companies. Mm -hmm. so, so these are the things that are still something to be done but the right foundation and the reinsurance from the last election for these reforms, I think, is quite encouraging from mm -hmm. the outside perspective sure. that India will continue. So, you briefly spoke about reforms India is trying to undertake. Uh, out of so many things, uh, what has caught your attention? We are trying to do stuff in, in the power sector, in housing, GST, of course, and many others, which has caught your attention, which you were particularly uh, you know, impressed about or you liked the we are moving in? You know, I was surprised somehow the bold step with the demonetarization because right. that came for everybody out of the blue and it hurt our business as well because we do a lot of cash on delivery. But on the long run, it's probably a good, uh, you know, if you have, you know, if people have to declare where the money comes from, it's always a good step. I think that's a, a very solid reform. You know, I'm coming from a country with low corruption, uh, Germany. 
and you know, I think the middle class will benefit the most because you know you should deserve what is your right anyway, and you don't have to pay twice for it. Or people are bypassing money, and everybody should pay taxes. I think that's a very solid step as well. Mm -hmm. Even it came as a surprise out of the blue for everybody, and it hurt on a short notice. On the long run, the country probably will benefit from mm -hmm. that as well. So, how you call that? It's for if I'm excited, I would say it was more a surprise. <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, what do you make of the current leadership of our country? the way he's engaging with large corporations uh, across the world, some of them your peers, some similar large corporations, even uh, global leaders across the world. Uh, what do you make of the way uh, Mr. Modi has taken his agenda forward? Yeah, so I have met only once your Prime Minister uh, in the last one and a half years, um, and I was quite impressed by his vision. You know, I think he has a clear vision where the country should go, but that's more to judge for the Indians than for a foreigner. But as I said already, I'm feeling encouraged that what he does so far is good for business and if it's good for business, it's finally also good for the citizens. It usually takes time until it materializes for everybody, but overall, I think you know, India is in the right con uh, 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 track and I think I can only make compliments about that. If you keep that pace mm -hmm. uh, and put very renewable energies in place as uh, the plants are and you make uh, India a manufacturing hub, which is not happening overnight. Foreign investments takes time to come because they want to see the proof that the reforms are really implemented as suggested. You know, then I think you are in a very good, good path, and and that I think is encouraging for yourself and also for us as an investor into this country. So you are convinced that uh, initiatives or reforms like GST can meaningfully alter the way business is conducted in our country Absolutely. and add to the efficiency. Absolutely. How much time do you think? It, it, it'll potentially take for all those benefits to start coming in and what could be the challenges in your view? That's very difficult but I, I you should not expect too much in positive impact in the next 12 months or so, maybe even 24 months. You know, these things take time. Businesses decide not very rapidly. They, they need to see the impact and mm -hmm. therefore I think you need patience and that's a part, that makes the job of politicians significantly more difficult than mine because I have no re-elections, you know, I have to my, renew my contract, but that's with 20 people and the shareholders have to be happy, but, you know, as a politician, you have constant uh, elections and therefore it is much tougher because citizens are not very patient if they don't know, if they, if they don't see the impact, but I'm a very optimistic that at least in two years from now you will see significant uh, mm -hmm. impact from the reform. One last word from you about uh, your India plans, where do you see uh, your company uh, over the next two, three years, any specific uh, targets you set in mind or direction you would like <coughs> to move in as far as the Indian opportunity goes? Yeah, we want to grow our business organically. Um, we uh, and don't give ourselves revenue targets. Uh, we don't share profitability targets externally anyway on, on a country level. Um, but I can say with now having one billion revenue already in this country with 25,000 employees, we definitely want to invest north from 250 million euro until 2020s. We see growth opportunity everywhere and that needs additional investments and we will do that uh, and feel even encouraged now by the current reforms which are taken. Mm -hmm. All right, Frank, uh, uh, it was wonderful chatting up with you. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on Ichinao. And with that, it's a wrap on the show. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash etnow.